Hey, Darius, you want to put it on the uh, front uh, first slide? So actually, uh, correct correcting a typo. <laughs> oh, okay.
Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you very much for uh, attending another uh, e-sales presentation. Uh, this month, we have uh, Climore Air Handlers and presenting for us today is Darius Silman. Um, we'll be presenting on examples of heat and energy recovery devices used in air handling units. Um, I did want to say, um, if you have any questions um, you know, during the presentation, please feel free to uh, fill those out in the uh, chat or the question box, um, and we will do our best to stop at an appropriate time to, uh, to answer or to have Darius answer those questions. Uh, but with that, um, I will hand things over to Darius to get things started. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Austin. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, um, and, and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us in this uh, uh, Friday. Uh, 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 beautiful Friday day. I, uh, as I mentioned, I work for Climber USA. I'm responsible for uh, West Coast and uh, I will um, spend this 40, 45 minutes with you uh, talking about uh, heat energy recover, recover, recovery devices uh, in uh, air handling units. Um, I will uh, focus on, on most common ones. Uh, obviously, there's uh, there's a large number of uh, possible options, but I'm, today I'm going to focus on some of the uh, common ones. And again, I, uh, I, uh, if some of the information that I'm presenting um, uh, is um, is not new to you or is you know kind of uh, common, um, uh, I apologize. But I wanted to give uh, started this you know the hopefully first of many uh, webinars uh, uh, as to, to give you a, a broader look and maybe in future uh, do a little deep dive on, on some of them. Uh, so uh, in the, the most common uh, uh, ERVs uh, or energy recovery uh, uh, devices uh, that are uh, uh, found in air handlers are energy wheels, plate heat exchangers, and counter cross flow, uh, flow plate heat exchangers, uh, and pumping exchangers, that's a, a subsection uh, of, of plate heat exchangers, heat pipes, and glycol loops. Mm. Uh, obviously, there's pros and cons to every uh, a solution, and uh, we're uh, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about each of them. Uh, let's start with, with energy wheels. Well, first of all, uh, this is uh, uh, requires an air handler to have a supplier in turn, Airstream. The, those airstream needs to be uh, need to be next to each other, I, I, either over under or uh, side by side. And uh, what's um, very important is that uh, uh, it requires uh, a, a counterflow of airstreams for efficient operation. Out of all of uh, um, energy devices that we would talk, this one, this is this uh, today, this particular uh, device requires it and. Basically, uh, uh, without counterflow of airstreams, uh, it won't act properly. It won't give you an efficient recovery. Mm. Uh, obviously, you know, energy wheels can be uh, manufactured in single piece and or in slices, especially for the big ones. It's it's a very uh, a common solution to have them built in slices, even uh, delivered to the job site. Uh, because those really can uh, uh, be quite big. Uh, this is one of the energy uh, energy recovery devices that uh, rec uh, that has moving pieces. That's why there are some people that don't like them. You know, when you have moving pieces, uh, you have an option to fail, right? Uh, obviously, uh, the uh, spinning the spin of the wheel is done by motor and with a belt, and obviously, and also in its um, uh, in the uh, current. Uh, you know, the uh, standard of, of, of air handlers, uh, usually those uh, motors also have VFDs, and this is how you control the recovery efficiency and also, you know, uh, uh, provide uh, frost control um, for, for, a, a, uh, for a climates that, that, you know, have an option of, of having a, a freeze uh, of the wheel. Um, as I mentioned, those can, the wheels can be quite uh, large. The, the a standard applications range from anything but with diameters from 20 inches to even 240 inches. The foil thickness used in such wheels is, you know, anything between 70 and 100 microns. It's, uh, and also the, the wheel itself, the type of the wheel 
Uh, there are different options there. You have, you know, sensible only or only latent recover. You have full thermal wheel, energy wheel. We'll talk a, bit, a little bit more about that wheel in a, in a bit and a dissecant wheel. As far as recovery efficiency, it's anything between 65 to 90 percent. Obviously, there's um, different different uh, 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 different things impact the recovery efficiency. Uh, how fast the wheel is spinning? How, what's the uh, how fast the air is moving through the wheel? What's the wheel uh, thickness? What's the foil thickness? What's the coating? There's a uh, the different thing and everything. Obviously the application, uh, each application can be different and uh, you know the efficiency also can differ. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I wanted to focus on one, on one of the wheels that we are actually using in our uh, air handlers. It's uh, mm, called Hugo Enthalpy Rotor. It's a wheel manufactured by a company Klingenborg from Germany, but also they have manufacturing in in US in in High Point, uh, North Carolina. And this this wheel is actually uh, uh, top of the, one of the you know uh, highest quality wheels on the market. Uh, what it, in in addition to obviously being only a, a full aluminum wheel. It also has this special uh, coating, the uh, Hugo Zeolite coating, that, uh, that they uh, uh, claim that has a selective absorption. So, what it what it offers is that it doesn't transfer odor, uh, has no fi no fibers, and uh, uh, the aluminum itself is uh, is resistant, uh, corrosion resistant, and. Mm, and what it gives is get high, very high performance uh, and low pressure drops. Mm. What we uh, uh, what we've uh, uh, learned from using that wheel is that uh, it actually you know offers quite a high quite, quite a bit uh, quite a higher efficiency of recovery, and also can you know can be used in uh, you know very hazardous environments with, uh, because of the coating that they use. Uh, and uh, the way that they they manufacture it's a very high quality uh, product. Mm. The, as, as I mentioned, the uh, the surface of the of the of the wheel of the aluminum is coated with uh, with uh, this zeolite uh, zeolite uh, coating, and uh, it's it's uh, offers not only and not only uh, you know uh, transfer of 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 uh, heat or uh, but also tra offers transfer of uh, humidity and that's something that uh, those uh, uh, energy wheels uh, full thermal wheels uh, whatever you call them offer uh, as far as the wheel itself you know and what what pros and cons uh, wheels offer one of the things that i mentioned that uh, engineers and um, people that use the, those type of equipment in the in the field don't like is that it has a moving part, right? So it's an it's a, a device that can fail because you know it has a motor, it has a belt that needs to be checked. It has a VFD. All those things uh, might be problematic, as we all know. And also, wheels uh, wheels have uh, there's always an, uh, uh, some bleeding between the air streams. Uh, there haven't been a wheel yet designed that is 100%. Uh, that 100%, um, uh, uh, you know, that can separate airstreams. So that's uh, one of the, you know, uh, uh, applications that wheels may, might not be, might not be suitable. Is that you really want to exhaust full air uh, uh, from 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 the building? You you don't want to go uh, any of that air being exhausted back back to the to to to, to, to location to the building. So you know, the wheel is uh, probably the best. Uh, solution, uh, in my opinion, uh, when when there's no particular, uh, uh, you know, the, in, 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 when there's a simple application, because it has offers very high efficiency and uh, relatively uh, 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 low price and also and also you know lo low footprint, but there are some applications that uh, wheels are not suitable, uh, as I mentioned. Mm. The other, uh, uh, one of the things that also we've noticed, I, I don't have it on the slide, is that recently there have been, um, there's been a, you know, let's say a discussion and battle about uh, uh, about uh, dumpers, uh, I mean bypasses, uh, bypass dumpers and bypasses on the wheel. And, you know, it used to be, um, there's some engineers that like to have uh, bypass dumpers on the wheel in control, 
uh, efficiency in in that way and actually uh, ashra also uh, and, and um, uh, has it in their uh, guidelines however you know especially as us like people from 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 europe uh, um, originating from europe we strongly believe that you know the, the bypass on the on the energy wheel uh, doesn't really so solve any purpose right the, the uh, it's a it's a uh, it's a solution that's outdated that might be good when the wheel uh, that the, the before you know VFDs before you could freely control the spinning of the wheel uh, then maybe it had some uh, uses but now the efficiency of the wheel and uh, even you know stopping completely the uh, stopping the the, the 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 recovery completely can be done via the VFD very easily and also. What it can, uh, and also you know, uh, uh, adding uh, adding a bypass damper, and uh, and uh, you know, making the, the the active area of the wheel smaller adds also a pressure drop to to the whole uh, to the whole uh, potential pressure drop the whole um, uh, application, and also you know, obviously limits the the potential of recovery of efficiency of this solution. So that's something that. That we've been recently, you know, seeing uh, uh, some push towards uh, having the having the uh, bypasses on the wheel, and you know, in our opinion, we strongly believe that this is this serves really no 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 purpose. There are other ways to to achieve what what uh, this uh, this the, this seems to be doing. The the second type of energy recovery devices are plate heat exchangers and this is a bag of uh, a lot of different uh, uh, a lot of different uh, devices and uh, first of all you know standard you know the cube uh, plate heat exchanger we have uh, you know high is it standard or high efficiency then uh, we have counter cross flow which you see you can see here in the bottom some kind of the diamond and we also have NLP what's the diff different uh, in this solution from the wheel is that it has no moving parts uh, uh, the airstreams two airstreams that um, are separated by you know that that flow through the uh, the, uh, the energy re recovery device are separated by aluminum fins or membrane and in addition you know the the the, the fins can be coated for hazardous environments so it's also a good solution uh, for for you know high humidity or maybe you know some some special applications and uh, a, a recovery efficiency is controlled by face and bypass dampers here as i mentioned you know in the wheel i just said you know uh, that the that bypass dampers are not a good solution because there are other ways to control efficiency. Here, bypass and dampers are, <laughs> and bypasses, so this is the only way how you can control it, right? Because there's a moving part, you cannot stop the plate. What you can do is bypass it, right? This is how you do frost control. Uh, and there's, you know, the sizes, there are different sizes of those, uh, of those, of those plate heat exchangers, uh, how those operate, right? In some operation, heat from the outside air is uh, transferred into outgoing air, uh, uh, reducing air conditioning costs. And on, in winter, uh, the, the, the outgoing air is uh, transferred in the fresh air and in incoming air uh, and you know, reducing the heating costs. This is a principle. This is actually a good <laughs> operating principle for all uh, energy recovery devices. Uh, how it works, how those uh, plate heat exchangers work, especially aluminum plate ex exchangers, is that air travels through channels uh, in the plates of the heat exchanger. Uh, and supply and uh, as I mentioned, uh, supply and uh, what what are the uh, benefits uh, or what what's consider uh, what what's happens is that first of all supply and uh, air return air streams are return are separated in a plate heat exchanger, they're not uh, they're not uh, obviously not not being uh, uh, there's very little um, uh, uh, risk of cross contamination. Uh, in aluminum plate heat exchanger, there's no transfer of moisture, contaminants, and odors. And uh, obviously, recovery happens by transfer of heat between airstreams, right? Through those plates that are separating both airstreams. Uh, recovery is available in, in winter and summer. Uh, that's that's um, uh, as far as sizes. And um, there's... Uh, the uh, Darius, things, um, uh, yes. real quick. Sorry to interrupt you there. Um, yeah, we sure have so. a question here from uh, Scott Duncan. Um, asking yeah. how you deal with condensation inside the heat exchanger. 
which one general <laughs> uh gen yes that's right well the the the, the con is a di different thing because the condensation on on wheel is the, is basically well as far as wheel condensation actually the, this is what happens at the you know uh, uh, uh carryover of moisture or you know condense uh, hmm, it's it's something that we want right we want the moisture to be carried over as far as plate heat exchanger those uh those um, uh, uh, plate heat exchangers and you know air handlers that contain them all usually have uh, drain pads and because the way that they are uh, uh, installed, which you can see, it's usually on the lower side here. In the, so they are on the 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 condensation, the and the moisture just flows out of the heat exchanger with gravity. There's uh, this is how is how the proper uh, uh, plate heat exchanger sh should work, right? It's designed in the way that the condensation and just uh, uh, flows out of the um, out of the plate heat exchanger you know not naturally <laughs> Very good. with the air thank you. coming out yeah yeah perfect thank you yeah so uh, uh, as far as sizes sizes of the of the uh of the pla of the plate heat exchangers we have everything from you know a uh, small eight by eight uh, inches cubes to i've seen uh, uh applications that had you know 100 100 inches uh uh by 100 inches cubes uh what uh, and there you know there's multiple multiple manufacturers they do it differently there's you know people built walls with them because there's uh, uh, with plate heat exchangers you can actually you know uh, achieve bigger uh, uh, recovery or add to the cfm of the application by just adding those cubes right and then you can stack them together you can extend their uh, uh, area of the of the um, of the uh, uh, recovery by just uh, 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 adding more and more of those cubes uh, to the airstream. So that's a you know a very good elegant solution also to you know multiply and you know uh, increase the recovery. Uh, uh, I mentioned there's no cross cross contamination. Obviously, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, you never say you know zero, right? It's below zero point one percent because you know as a it's uh, the thing is that those airstreams in the air handler actually cross. So there's always some possible small uh, cross contamination, you know, on the seals, on the on the you know screws, on or places like that. We sell there's no uh, no no cross contamination. Obviously, there's a little always a little bit, but you know, be below zero point one percent is is, is uh, negligible in in most most cases. As I mentioned, the the, the plate heat exchanger can have a coating for uh, uh, various purposes, uh, the, for pool applications, for you know, for for hospital applications, for some clean room applications. There are different coating available for those plate heat, uh, plate heat, uh, heat exchangers. Uh, we talked about bypass a little bit. Usually, the bypass uh, the bypass is uh, uh, having a damper, and uh, some of the manufacturers try to. Uh, you know, save on cost by providing only damper on the bypass, but really, uh, really, as you can see here on the right, even in the middle, the, the, the really, you know, high quality manufacturers would provide face and bypass as well. So not only opening the bypass, but also closing fully the, the, um, the face of the, of the heat exchanger. Uh, as far as rec recover recovery efficiency, uh, it's usually plate heat exchangers has a, have a have a lower lower efficiency than 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 wheel, as I mentioned. But uh, it's still pretty good. It's above fifty percent, uh, and it's a solution uh, you know comparable to wheel, uh, especially in smaller applications. People prefer it in smaller applications. By smaller, I mean you know five, ten, uh, ten thousand cfm. Uh, why? Because again, we mentioned no moving parts, right? Uh, 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 the the plate heat exchanger, if properly maintained and there's no you know mechanical damage, uh, will work <laughs> indefinitely, right? It's like if there's you know the, the 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 if the air handler is properly maintained and you know filters are being um, replaced, it will just work uh, for 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 many many years. Uh, uh without without any any issues mm. uh let's move to the uh, next slide uh, 
uh, one of the subcategory uh, sub of, of plate heat exchangers are uh, enthalpy plate heat exchangers. Uh, and we, as a company, we partnered with, uh, with a company called Core from uh, Vancouver, uh, Br uh, British Columbia, which is, uh, those are uh, basically have the all the, all the same, all the um, benefits of, of plate heat exchangers, but in, in addition, because they have those membrane as I mentioned, those are actually uh, uh, also also uh, uh, carry moisture, and this is this is a, a nice uh, nice uh, uh, slide that shows how actually uh, those um, enthalpy plate heat exchanges work. So as you can see here, we have uh, this polymer membrane in the middle, and the way that is designed, the way it's manufactured, is that it won't allow. Uh, allow pass, you know, allow passing from uh, uh, return airstream to the supply airstream, you know, uh, uh, things like, you know, contaminants, odors, uh, things that we don't want to pass, but we actually have an, uh, 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 there's a uh, uh, the, the moisture, the latent energy, then in case of regular, you know, uh, aluminum plate exchangers won't, uh, doesn't pass here. In case of this uh, uh, enthalpy plate heat exchangers, uh, it does. So uh, with have with this with those um, uh, new um, well relatively new designed uh, enthalpy plate exchangers, we are having you know a, a, a sum you know a, a, a sum of both worlds, right? A little bit uh, we have a plate heat exchanger that doesn't allow that that's tight that doesn't allow cross contamination no moving pieces right but on the other hand allows for moisture uh, uh, carry over moisture you know uh, recovery right latent energy recovery so that's why those uh, you know relatively new uh, membrane uh, plate uh, uh, heat exchangers enthalpy uh, we call them enthalpy exchangers are uh, are are uh, very very uh, uh, can be a good very good uh, solution, uh, particularly in the small applications. Those usually again are are used for smaller applications. They're they're used very uh, very heavily in residential uh, residential applications for smaller uh, ERVs. Uh, yeah, and so so uh, that's 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 an, another you know sub type of uh, of uh, plate plate uh, heat exchanger uh, what's you know uh, uh, what's uh, ver mm, one thing that's uh, that's uh, let's say a little less good in those plate heat exchangers they don't really the enthalpy plate heat exchangers they don't they're not best uh, in a, a high pressure uh, applications when you have a lot of differential pressure between you know uh, supply and return air uh, when you cannot contain, uh, you know, keep the same pressure on both sides of the of the plate heat exchangers, those usually won't won't cut it, right? Because of the membrane, because of the uh, relatively, let's say, uh, uh, delicate construction of those, uh, you know, they're not uh, the best solution when you uh, have, you know, uh, when you, for example, have an application that has, you know. Positive pressure on the supplier and negative pressure on the on the returner. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, in order for them to properly work, you would have to design a, a, a system that on both sides, on your return and supply, through the this this, this enthalpy plate uh, heat exchanger, would have to have the same 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 pressure, right? Negative or positive, the same. So so it will kind of keep uh, keep the. Uh, the, 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 the device uh, intact, right? So that, that's one of the things that's, you know, there, uh, no, nothing is perfect, right? We, I mentioned that this, this device uh, has some great utilities, but it's, it's, uh, it's a, it also has some, has some problems. And it's not, you know, and it's not a uh, cheap solution. Uh, to be honest, uh, especially in, you know, uh, 15, 20,000 CFM, the, the, the units with, those uh, devices can be can be really pricey, and that's why uh, you don't really see them in in some big applications. Uh, first, that they take up a lot of space. The footprint would be is quite high, big then, and the cost of the 
of the of the of the equipment itself just adds up so as i mentioned you know wheels <laughs> it's always you, you know you always uh, playing this this game you know between you know a uh, uh, value for you know what you're getting for how much money you're willing to spend you know it's uh, it will be great if ever if, if it wasn't the case but you know that uh, probably better than me that it's usually you usually a, a balance between uh, the cost of the equipment versus what what it gives uh, uh, the user or you know, the investor uh, uh, the uh, one other, uh, the, the next uh, energy recovery device that I'll talk about are heat pipes. And uh, heat pipes are, you know, transfer devices capable of transferring heat and energy several hundred times faster than conventional methods. Um, and, uh, you know, traditional heat pipe is a, a hollow cylinder uh, that's filled with, with liquid, right? Uh, how do heat pipes work? Uh, they're, you know, uh, they're absorbed, uh, the heat is absorbed in the uh, evaporation section, fluid boils, and then heat is released from upper part of the cylinder to the environment, right? And, uh, and liquid returns the gravity to the lower part of the, of, of the cylinder, right? This is, this is uh, basic. This is how it, 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 uh, it's done. Um, and the, the, the heat pipe are heat pipes that are most commonly used in air handlers are not really, uh, because their efficiency is not uh, high. Uh, there have some other benefits, which I will talk in a in a in a bit in a in a, in a, in a bit. But uh, what it's usually is that it's used to improve the humidification, right, and recovery from exhaust air streams. So uh, generally, there are two types of uh, heat pipe that are you know, most commonly used. And first one is uh, a wraparound uh, heat pipe. Here you can see on the on the on the right uh, hand side, it's usually combined with with uh, standard chilled water coil. So uh, how it's used is that the first section is uh, is is, uh, is located in the uh, in the in the beginning of the unit and in incoming air stream, usually uh, right after filter section or mixing box, uh, and then uh, and then uh, uh, the, the the air that comes from outside passes to the heat pipes and, and ref refrigerant vaporizes, right? The, and the heat is carried to the second uh, section. And in the middle, obviously, then it, if, if we wouldn't have a, a coil in the middle, then the heat pipe wouldn't really work in the, the single single uh, airstream uh, unit. You know, uh, one thing that obviously here is the different that I haven't mentioned yet is this wraparound heat pipe works in only supply uh, uh, you know, single uh, supply uh, device, right? You don't need a, a return airstream for this device to work because it works only in, in one uh, one airstream, right? That's why it's called wrap around. It wraps around the chilled water coil. So uh, once the once the heat pipe the in in the, the pre cool heat pipe uh, 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 is uh, heated, right? It goes. Uh, it goes to the, to the to the reheat heat pipe, and uh, so the the and the co and uh, uh, the heat goes there. But the air uh, is cooled by the by the um, uh, the, the coil, uh, usually evaporation coil or you know some um, and and then the air is uh, overcooled, right? So it's um, uh, uh, it dehumidifies uh, 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 the air, and then the reheat heat pipe that uh, is able to bring the temperature up to to what we want to achieve right so it's this this uh, uh, energy recovery is used in a situation when we really want to uh, uh, dehumidify the air we and we use the evaporator chill water coil so that's something that that that's worth considering always uh, it's it's you know free, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, it's uh, once the heat pipe uh, heat pipe is purchased, it doesn't you know uh, uh, require any any energy additional energy. So so once you you know in invest in a heat pipe, it's just producing uh, uh, only benefits. Again, the efficiency of, of of such heat pipes is not high, but it all usually can uh, uh, can uh, help help out and you know. Um, uh, 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 depends on the on the again on the airstream or the temperatures of other things, but usually can 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 help out uh, a, a whole device 
uh, uh, in, in recovering some of the energy that is used uh, for dehumidifying uh, the air. Mm -hmm. The other option of heat pipe that is very commonly used and that's that also uh, uh, very, uh, especially recently, um, uh, we've seen quite an increase of use of those heat pipes is that uh, is that uh, those uh, heat, well, uh, I call them true heat pipes because first of all, the difference between this and the previous one, you need two, two airstreams. You need the return airstream and the supply airstream. And there's, um, you know, those heat pipes are, again, there's no move, moving parts. The, the heat pipes are, can be either uh, built even in a single, single block or they can have a, a separation of airstream longer. But the, 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 and they're designed in two ways, either side by side, as you can see here on the, on the, on the screen, or over under. That um, so basically you have the supply airstream or return airstream above the other, and um, and uh, what uh, what's great about this is that. You know, it, it offers you know very compact design, low pressure drop, uh, and uh, high uh, optimized season effectiveness and travel free operation. As I mentioned, no moving parts, so it's a it's a very good product for 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 uh, for all parties. That again, the, maybe the the efficiency of the recovery is not a lot, but it just adds to the whole uh, uh, the whole application or adds to the. Uh, uh, and saves saves the investors, uh, you know, uh, uh, money, uh, helping helping out uh, the, the 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 recovery of, of of the equipment, of energy of the uh, of the equipment. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, the final uh, uh, bonus of of heat pipes is that uh, it it's um, there's basically. Uh, in in the properly uh, manufactured equipment, there's no uh, 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 no risk of uh, contamination of supplier, right? So the the separation of the supplier and airstream can be done, even uh, can be completely split uh, up to sixty feet, right? So uh, um, heat pipes like that may usually require some additional additional uh, devices, but uh, even in a, in a, in a uh, heat pipe, like you see on the on the right uh, side, uh, uh, the the risk of contamination contamination is is, is uh, uh, completely gone. And uh, the the final um, type of uh, ERV that uh, device that I would like to uh, just touch base a little bit. It's something that honestly we we have not seen uh, be very popular here. Uh, well, in, in maybe general uh, applications of, of air handlers, because the efficiency is is maybe not the great, and it's and the application then the, the equipment equipment itself can be quite pricey. Are the uh, you know energy recovery glycol loops? Mm, uh, glycol loops run around glycol loops. Uh, there's different names for the for the same application. It's basically uh, and again this requires to have a, a supply and a return airstream. And what it uses is they use uh, uh, copper and aluminum coils, standard you know coils that you that you it are you know <laughs> bread and butter of of uh, air handlers, right? Chilled water coils, hot water coils. Here they they pose uh, 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 they they act a little differently. Uh, they uh, those are usually you know 12, 16, even 18 rows with a standard fin pitch. But you know that that you know 16, 18 rows. This is something that you you, you don't see on the on the chilled water. But this here it serves a different uh, purpose. In addition, there's you know as you can see on the left side you have one coil on the supply airstream and other uh, coil in the return airstream what it uh, and there's always like some hy hydraulic installation between the coils with pump with some valves uh, there's you know uh, different ways of of you know mo moving the glycol between those two what it what it what this application offers is that it offers a little higher efficiency than the the heat pipe but uh, on offers absolute, you know, separation of supply and, and return airstream. This is uh, application that is uh, usually used, you know, in in in, in hospitals and uh, environments that absolutely cannot have uh, a, a returner exhauster uh, getting back to the supplier. This is this is and this 
solution gives uh, this um, uh, uh, gives this option. As you know, on, here on the right, you can see actually it's in, it's in the same cabinet in one unit. But actually, those uh, uh, the way that the, those um, uh, can be designed, they can be very far apart. They can be, you know, in 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 different locations of of the building even, right? So, and it uh, uh, with you know some some limits of of how you know how how uh, how long you can you want to pump the glycol, but uh, but what it gives is again is gives an energy recovery option in a situation that you have basically two separate units. You have separate, uh, you have exhaust unit maybe in one mechanical room and supply unit in the second mechanical room and the same floor, or maybe different floor even, and different floors, uh, uh, one on top of the other. And you can have this glycol loop running between them and achieve uh, energy uh, uh, recovery. So that's something that none of the previous uh, options uh, you know, it, it cannot happen with a with a plate heat exchanger. It can happen with the wheels. All those units had uh, had the same needed to be in the single single uh, piece, right? Single single um, uh, device. Hey, Darius. Uh, yes. I got a I have a question here from Scott Duncan um, asking uh, about a detail of, of I guess how the inner rows of a sixteen row coil are cleaned typically. Uh, well. Uh, yeah, that's that, that. That's a good question. You know, <laughs> uh, mm, that's not well. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. That's why uh, th usually those uh, those uh, uh, coils. You know, when you have sixteen row coil, you usually have uh, have uh, uh, the the fin fin pitch is a little uh, lower, right? So the plates are a little a little um, further apart so and also to you know reduce the pressure drop and you know the cleaning is same as any standard coil right it's a you know and if you just you know what, uh, if you need to actually clean it you 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 have to you know pre uh, use water right pressure that's the only you know good solution right um, and to be honest you know those if if I want to say that you know if you have 16 and 18 uh, row coils, uh, the way that the, those units should be designed is that you, you shouldn't need to clean the coils. <laughs> I know it's a, it's not, not exactly the the answer that that probably uh, uh, um, uh, the gentleman is expecting, but uh, that's the truth. You know you don't want to you know you don't want to have a clogged you know 18 row coil because you know. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just not it's it shouldn't uh be needed to be cleaned you know oh maybe like this i should say like this okay i don't know if it Thanks, answers Jerry. the answer well i i guess i get a little cup, cup, cup around that uh, answer the question but you know again it says it's a stand well it's not standard but it's the same construction as chill water coil right those glycol coils uh it's just you know again in normal situations you you shouldn't need to clean the coil. something bad happened if if the coil needs cleaning, right? Okay, understood. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Uh, so, so yeah. So, as, as I mentioned, you know, I'm gonna do a little reading here, but you know, uh, a, a typical uh, coil rec uh, energy recovery uh, system places, you know, extended surface, you know, thin tube water coils in the supply and exhaust of air streams. Right, the coils are connected in a closed loop via counterflow piping through which. An intermediate heat transfer fluid, typically water or freeze prevent, uh, preventive solution, is pumped. Right, as I mentioned, glycol, either ethylene or, or propylene. The system operates for sensible heat recovery only. Right, as again, there's no because the air streams are completely separated. There's no uh, there's no uh, uh, moisture carryover. There's no possible recovery of moisture. Uh, it's a you know mm, so uh, uh, what are the advantages of this solution you know the, the, as I mentioned and one of the biggest you know advantage is does not require that the uh, two airstreams be adjacent to each other right uh, several airstreams can be used right because you can you can actually loop those right uh, has uh, relatively few move, moving parts. Uh, this is, you know, something that uh, I mentioned in in a heat uh, heat pipe. You, you don't have any moving parts yet. Here you have a, a, a pump and con con control valves, right? Nothing else moves, and the pumps are usually, you know, the least expensive uh, part of this uh, system. So if it fails, it's it's it it it's relatively, you know, inexpensive to replace. 
uh, space efficient? Uh, yes, because it's using, you know, it's again, this, uh, using the same size of air handler like you would normally have coils. The only addition you have those uh, pipes between the supply and, and, and return. Uh, the cooling or heat equipment can be uh, reduced, right? It doesn't have to be maybe for the full uh, CFM. Uh, the moisture removal capacity of existing cooling equipment can be improved. No cross-contamination between airstream. Yeah, that's something that cannot be uh, understated enough. What are the, the uh, disadvantages? Add to the uh, to the first cost, right? As I mentioned, you know, 12 to 16, 18 row coils. That's something that 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 costs. Plus, a cold pressure drop for those applications is is quite high, right? With a glycol and everything, those uh, uh, those applications are very expensive in upfront, right? At the beginning, uh, requires added glycol pump and piping, expansion tank, freeway freeze protection control, but all those things connected to you know having a glycol in the in in um, in the building, having the, the the installation between between those two units, and uh, requires that the airstreams must be relatively clean and may require filtration. Uh, this is, you know, oh, I want to say that you know, in my you know, or air handlers require filtration because as, as the, this is you know coming back to the question about cleaning, you know, you don't really want to clean those coils, and that's why it's so it's such important in in addition to this you know expensive installation to have a proper filtration uh, you know dual the pre filter final filter uh, so they catch everything that might you know uh, get into into the unit right. Uh, oh. What are the, uh, the best applications for this uh, uh, type of uh, solutions? You know, um, for, uh, first of all, you know, increased ventilation requirements and rising energy prices have stimulated interest in, in heat recovery systems. Right, with heat recovery, existing systems capacity can be increased without adding chiller or boiler capacity. This system is best applied in buildings where most of the supply ventilation air and the exhaust air is in one or two ducts that are not too far apart. Uh, what are the best applications? As the system is for sensible heat recovery only, it is best applied in locations when there is a sizable heating season. Uh, again, maybe not, <laughs> maybe not California. I assume there are some parts in California that, that, that have a heating season. Projects that require a large percentage of outdoor air increases system efficiency by transferring heat in the exhaust to either pre-cool or preheat in the coming air. What are the possible applications? You know, any building when reducing the sensible load on the cooling uh, equipment is advantageous. And applications to avoid uh, where there's a number of intake or exhaust air ducts that must be piped. You know, the benefits are likely not to offset the higher fan pump and uh, first cost. So, you know, as I mentioned, this is this is uh, a solution. This is a, a product that. Uh, is you know uh, we we don't see as a as an air handling manufacturer uh, be very popular uh, in the United States. Uh, maybe it's popular in some applications that we just don't touch. Uh, but you know uh, from our experience uh, in Europe, uh, that uh, you know our you know our experience in Europe shows that this is an application that has has. Uh, been and been been uh, fairly fairly popular. Again, it's not it's not popular as wheels are or play heat exchangers, but for sure uh, we are seeing much more use of this type of applications that we see uh, in the United States. So that uh, that brings me to an end. You know, and, and again, uh, I'm sorry that maybe some of the information that I provided was very basic, but this was just the first first uh, in my well. I hope this is just the first of of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, a number of the such uh, webinars, and I will be you know mm, will be uh, glad if we can maybe you know get some information after that. What type of uh, energy recovery devices you would like to hear about and maybe what type of problems you see or what type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some do some deep dive on, on some of the applications or some of the solutions that we can offer. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, thank you very much, Darius. That was very good. Um, I think we will get some feedback, you know, from our participants today and see if there's any particular topics we can set up another webinar for to go um, into a bit more, uh, more deeper dive into that topic. Um, yeah. 
But no, again, thank you very much. Um, I did have uh, one question that we didn't answer during uh, the meeting that I wanted to bring up so we can do that. And then again, if anyone does have any questions for Darius uh, before we wrap up, you know, feel free to uh, write those into the chat now, um, or if there's any particular topics, you know, even now that you would like to learn more about for a future webinar, we can we can take a look at that and try and plan for another one in the future. Um, so that uh, question, one second. <clears throat> yeah, so this was uh, this was from Scott Duncan again. It says for applications uh, that are starved for maintenance, um, manpower, and funding, like the uh, Department of Defense, uh, where the filter change interval may be from six to twelve months, with uh, no maintenance between uh, the filter changes, what would be um, like a recommended solution uh, for something uh, for that particular application? Uh, plate heat exchangers definitely plate heat uh, exchangers. exchangers yes uh well uh the, the couple of things you know one uh one thing is obviously maintenance if filter changes are not too frequent and uh and and uh, there's no really you know like uh, uh i assume that the main just main